All right, I'm excited to be back in the black hole of real estate uh, this week. Uh, I want to talk about you know some of the concerns and a simple explanation for these buyer brokerage agreements. I got half the world freaking out. And also, you know, among agents and the trainers uh, in real estate for years, they've talked about list the last, and you know, I think that they, uh, I think they got it kind of wrong. Um, so let, let, let's get started right there on what they might have gotten wrong. You see, when you hear list to last in the real estate training space, it almost always is very specific to working with sellers. Go get listings, go get listings, go get listings, list to last. If you got listings, you have a chance at half the commission. And, uh, and they're not wrong, but they're only focused on half of the business, 90% of the training classes you know, that, that I've witnessed over the years. Like, you, you gotta have listings. And, and I believe somewhere along the line, I, I think that they overreached into that bucket and spent so much time on the listing training to build a sustainable business, I, I think they really got it wrong. And now with the NAR, all these uh, things that we see, these agreements and commission problems and all that other stuff that we don't need to go into today, what we find is that now this buyer brokerage agreement, which has always been there, is like this shiny new object, this brand new thing, and, and it just isn't the case. Had, had we had more time spent in these trainings as an industry over many, many years that talked about the value and importance of having an agreement with the buyer in place since the forms are there and actually just trained on it and got used to doing it the same way that we've been taking listings for year and years, well, then we wouldn't be feeling this anxiety as an industry. Like, what are we going to do? It's like, it's if you've been doing it all along, this really doesn't represent a change. It just doesn't. And if you have not been doing it, there's this fear like, well, what do I do now? I, I guess the problem would be if an agent had never, and I mean never taken a listing, this is going to be terrifying. But if you had, you actually know the process. You demonstrate value. You come to an agreement of what work is going to be done and what the compensation is. You know, this isn't any different than what doctors and lawyers do. You know, Perhaps you get a consultation with an attorney, but before we take that next step, they're going to put an agreement in front of you, an engagement letter, and it defines the, the way that you're going to work together. This really isn't any different. And the form's been sitting someplace in many, many of these form um, areas, if you will, that you can grab, especially in the e-sign areas. You know, the forms, they've just been sitting there. They've just never been opened or never been used. So for me, the anxiety of these agreements. It's just not that big. So, you know, list the last. Agents worried about it and freaking out and quitting the business and getting out because it's going to get too hard and too complicated. I think you've way overcomplicated things. If anything, I think we're going to find right now is the training under list the last is probably going to overcorrect where all we talk about is buyer agreements, which is kind of what we're doing right now. And we're going to spend a lot of time understanding how to fill out a very simple form, creating a value proposition that way overreaches when honestly it's a relationship business. And if you provide value and the buyer feels that you are the best possible resource for them to get what they want, the right home, the right price at the right time, and I think they're going to work with you. And for those that were going to always work on their own or negotiate commissions, I think they've been doing that for you know many, many years. Now, it might occur more often because the availability and time is there, but let's face it, not everybody wants to do everything that's involved in the real estate process, and not everybody wants to find and access the properties and get the showing instructions and write the agreements because it, it can take a little bit of time. I think the ones that have been doing it on their own for years, they'll just keep doing it. I think some people will test it out, and some would get really good at buying on their own. I think the vast majority of the people are going to be comfortable working with agents like they have for most of their lives. So it's a self-sorting problem. We're going to have this 
arena where the training is going to shift from list to last and only talk about sellers, I think we're going to have list to last and only talk about buyers for a minute. And at some point, we might just reach our, uh, our neutral area where we just talk about both agreements in the same conversation, which maybe we could have been doing all along. So if you're on the list to last train, that's great. You've been talking about working just with sellers for a year to last, and maybe now you're going to overcorrect and working with the buyers, and that's fine. But it is kind of interesting. So I thought I'd bring it up today because it's, it's had me laughing a little bit. Um, so that, that's my list of last piece. Now, as, as far as the consumer, if you're an agent in a business and you're trying really hard to have a suitable explanation of what's going on, I, I, I think it's simple direct and to the point and it might be as simple as just letting people know that you know in the real estate industry there's been a lot of talk about these buyer brokerage agreements and um, you know they've been around for a while and they're not that complicated matter of fact they're kind of easy and, and here's what I mean you know for years you've had agreements where you agreed to work with an agent in their brokerage to exclusively sell your home and you sign those papers and they sell your home and it's been really good well, the same agreements have always been available to do the same thing when you're buying a home, except for now, if you're going to use an agent, you're going to have to choose an agent and have an agreement in order for that process to work. And um, that could be a really good thing. So it's, it's not all that different. It's not that drastic of a change. And if we can take the concern out of that piece and explain it that way, it might be a lot simpler for the consumer. And at the end of the day, if you want to level a playing field and make it more transparent and, and more easily navigated, I think that's the way to do it. So I'm going to just say underthink it, undercomplicated, keep it really, really simple. And I think you get better results and happier conversations with the people that are looking to purchase a home and move in 2024 and take some of the anxiety out of it where you cause someone to actually just stay put and not move because you made it really hard for them to do that. So I hope that's kind of sinking in for anybody that's either in the industry or maybe thinking of making a move this year that thought it was going to be way too hard to do. Now, there's going to be layers of complexity within that and who pays for what and how does it get done. But I think when we get there, it's going to be mostly sorted out. I don't think it's going to be as abrupt as most people think unless they want to make it hard. And if you want to make things hard in life, man, you can actually you can create problems where none exist i see it every day and not just in real estate so um let's just um, be open-minded about proceeding in a way that might just be easy now one thing that i did mention at the beginning that i do want to talk about right now is that we are finding more and more sales um, that are running into some issues with the insurance and I believe that in the beginning, if you are able to get inspections or four-point inspections, the uh, wind mitigation reports, especially in Florida because of the hurricanes, if you can get the insurance information earlier in the process, you would know that is this a deal that's going to work or is a DOA just never going to work because maybe you need flood insurance or maybe the roof needs to be replaced and a seller can't pay for it and a buyer is not going to put a roof in a house that they don't own. I believe if we can get in front of it on the insurance side of things and, and run some of these um, inspections. Now, as a seller, if you get a wind mitigation report and a home inspection report and a four-point inspection report up front, yes, you're going to spend some money on it. There's no question you're going to spend some money on that. But I think it makes your home imminently more sellable if you've got those pieces in place because along with your seller's disclosure or your lead paint disclosure, maybe the homeowners association documents, any of the myriad of documents, what if you had a recent home inspection report that you can show to everybody in full transparency, hey, here's what we got. And you know what, if you do some repairs that came up in the report, we'll include those receipts as well. Now I've done this a number of times in properties that I've sold and it served me really well. The buyer is always able to go get their own inspections in case they just want a second opinion. But there's a number of people that might just want to save that money. If the report's been done by a, a five-star company recently, it's probably not much reason for concern, and it's a very trustable report. It might actually create a situation where there's even more candidates to buy 
the home that you're selling as opposed to pushing people away. And I just want people to think about that. So pre-inspecting your home and getting a look at the insurance and maybe just providing the deck pages, the declaration pages of your homeowner's insurance or your flood insurance or anything else that goes along with it, I think is going to go a long, long way to helping people have better sales where the buyer and seller can agree to get the right price at the right time in the right home. And I believe these are the things that are going to push us forward in the industry as a whole and make it better for everybody. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I know I had a lot of fun with this one personally because I've been laughing, just trying to put these words together in a way that made sense to you. This is Ron Wysikarski for the Black Hole of Real Estate.